Okay. And once you get uh, to where you downloaded that uh, icon, uh, we're going to bring up our leaf pad, and you're going to uh, paste, which I've already done here, uh, the information about the, uh, the desktop. And this, what this does is this uh, allows you to run this headless, and it's going to automatically start uh, when it boots, uh, basically is the way it works. So you're going to you know, paste the entry, and I'm going to put a link to this in, on my uh, QRZ page uh, where you can download this uh, information. And you're going to go file, and you're going to save at, or save as, and you're going to save it in two places. You're going to save it as dvat underscore tool dot desktop, and you're going to save it in the uh, the uh, home pi dvap directory, and you're also going to save a copy in the home pi dot config slash auto start uh, directory. So that way, when it boots, it's going to automatically start up. So I've already done that. Uh, so you've saved one copy in the DVAP directory, the home pi DVAP, and one in the home pi dot config slash auto start directory. So uh, once you do that, you can go ahead and close that out. And uh, go ahead and exit that out. Alrighty, while well, you're there, and then. Uh, you're just going to go down to the start button, so to speak, uh, as in Windows users will know. Uh, go to log out. And then uh, you're going to go ahead and reboot. So while we're doing that, it's shutting down. Go ahead and reboot. And I've already turned my radio on to the 70-centimeter to the uh, frequency here. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the green light is flashing, and uh, as it's booting, you'll see uh, when the DVAP tool comes up, you'll see that it's going to go ahead and change to green or into blue flashing, uh, which means that it is connected uh, to the Pi and ready to take commands. And as it starts up, uh, you'll see now that it's flashing the blue. The blue light means it's good to go. And you can go ahead and click OK on here. And uh, let me go ahead and close this. I had already uh, set this in there, but uh, you put in whatever your station call sign. Uh, normally, you're going to be using this as your personal uh, uh call sign so currently this is running uh, with our club call sign which is KF5 QAR uh, and I want to unlock that normally you would have that locked uh, I need to run it unlocked uh, so I can let multiple people uh, use it uh, and then I put the frequency that the DVAP is on which is 442700000 so there should be uh, there's got to be a total of three, what, six, eight uh, numbers there. So whatever your frequency is, make sure you fill the rest in with zeros because it's in megahertz, not, uh, or it's in hertz, not megahertz. Uh, this should automatically fill out to wherever you found your DVAP, which is USB zero in my case. And I'm going to go ahead and click open, which what the, the desktop uh, startup that we made earlier uh, that's what this does is it automatically sends the open command so you can run it headless and not have to uh, have uh, a keyboard or anything connected to it. So basically this runs it and does it for you. So I'm going to click open and it found it and it's all ready to go. So now on my DVAP I can just key up and there you go. You see my call sign right there. Uh, of course we're not connected to a repeater or a reflector. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and let's connect to, uh, oops, go here and connect to, uh, 4 Bravo. Uh, I think somebody's on there talking, so it'll be a good test. So we're going to put on 4 Bravo and we're going to hit connect. Remote, this is 
from LinkedIn. And there we go. And as we're linked to 4 Bravo, so now we're going to go uh, hit uh, CQ. Uh, W5 TMP with a test. Uh, N5ZZA, this is W5TMP with a test of uh, making a video here uh, of uh, de demystifying the Raspberry Pi with a DVAP. Uh, near uh, my first contact with it booted up there, so I'll go ahead and say hi to everybody. Alright, very good video coming in loud and clear. Yeah, I've run Raspberry Pi myself, so I probably have some questions about some of the updates you've done and how you make it look more efficient. Right now, we're in HF. I'm going to be running the HF into the local ND5N machine with a portable uh, ID video. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, working fine. You had a little bit of packet loss, but uh, it's probably just the internet. So uh, it sounded good. Uh, yeah, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have uh, uh, once we get the video up here. Actually, the outer edge of the coverage was HT, so passing in behind some buildings and may have some R2D2. So, probably not on your end, more on my end. Uh, okay, well, well, thank you for the test, and uh, let me get back to the video here and uh, finish her up. And I uh, thank you uh, for that, uh, the contact, and we'll definitely talk to you again. W5 TMP. Okay, so there we go. And we have it all set up. It's headless now. Now I can unplug my keyboard, my monitor, everything else. It'll take about 20, 30 seconds. And then if I um, took it apart, you know, took it loose uh, to get back up to where we are right now. And uh, that's about it. So just to basically uh, uh, to go over what we just uh, were talking about is that a uh, first step you need to pick out what image that you want to run do you want to run the DVAP tool from AA4RC do you want to run the uh, IRCDDB gateway uh, with a Debian based uh, through uh, G4KLX at westerndstar.co.uk uh, and uh, or do you want to run the uh, the Fedora remix which I uh, forgot to mention earlier but it's a very good image uh, from VK4TUX, uh, the Tux uh, auto image. Uh, all three of them are good choices. Uh, basically, the, the TUX image and the uh, G4KLX image are the exact same thing, but just running on different operating systems. So, uh, one runs on a little bit more robust, the TUX runs on a little more robust uh, Linux version uh, called uh, Fedora uh, Remix, which they just came out with a new. Uh, uh, iteration of it uh, called Pydora uh, 18 which uh, Adrian says that he's going to go ahead and re-image uh, his uh, to use that new uh, uh, version of it so uh, he's very helpful uh, what he does there and uh, so you pick your version download if you're going to use the Robin version then you uh, the, the DVAP tool then you're going to need to go to the uh, raspberrypi.org website and download the Wheezy, uh, Debian Wheezy version uh, uh, of the operating system. And then we'll go through all that like we did earlier where we, we got uh, the tools and we curled it and unzipped it and all that kind of stuff. A little bit more uh, uh, user interaction on that one. Uh, so if you feel any way that you can't do that, then you may want to stick with a, a G4 KLX version, which already has the image and everything installed. And I'm going to do another video on that one of how to set up, uh, probably within five minutes, uh, how to set that up and get it running uh, on the air for you. And then basically that's it. And I hope that demystified this 
a thing you've been hearing about on all the reflectors and all these places called the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's not pie at all, so sorry about that made you hungry. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's the Raspberry Pi. And that's uh, one of mine, and if you want to look at uh, my other one, it's on my uh, QRZ page at W5TMP. And uh, I thank you for watching this one, and I'm going to make another one in just a second, uh, a part two, where we're going to we're going to install the the G4 KLX uh, version of it, which is a little more robust. If you want to do like, uh, uh, and that was the one thing that I was going to tell you the difference is the Robin version. You can only stay on the the re regular reflectors without installing some more software. All you can do is the REF whatever, or connected repeaters that are D plus enable. On the Jonathan Naylor uh, software, the image, you can use IRC DDB gateway, which allows you to connect to the X reflectors, which you probably heard about, and the DCS reflectors, uh, uh, along with doing what's called CCS. Uh, uh, when you do CCS, if you, if you notice when I put on my, uh, call sign it says 4611 uh, the 4611 is my D, my CCS uh, direct uh, number so if you were doing call sign routing like let's say in, uh, you can't do it with this DVAP tool but you can do it with the IRCDDB gateway uh, I could do what's called call sign what you do call sign routing uh, which you do here with D plus but I can just type in on my keypad 4611 if I was somebody else, you know, calling me, and it would connect me directly uh, to them. So it's kind of neat. It's instead of doing call sign routing, you can just do uh, what's called DTMF uh, with the CCS. So that's it for now on this one. Uh, glad you uh, stayed there and uh, watched it with me, and I hope I answered all the questions. If not, just anytime, just uh, email me. Uh, my call sign W5TMP at ARRL.net or uh, even on uh, you just contact me with tparty at gmail.com that's a T is in tango party P-A-R-T-Y like you're having a party at gmail.com we thank you for watching and uh, glad I could help you <laughs>